So with this federal learning uh, concept very clear, uh, the next will uh, you know go go into the, some of the details of one baseline algorithm uh, that is called Fed Average. So this is proposed in this uh, paper, communication efficient learning of deep networks from decentralized data. And here are some of the uh, basic notations. Okay, so. First, we consider a set of uh, K parties or clients, right? So uh, these can be uh, different users. And each party will hold a data set, right? We denote as a DK, right? And each of the data set have uh, NK data points, okay? So in total, right? So if we if we do this in the centralized way, right? We have a, a joined data set. Um, you know, that's the union of D1 to DK, right? And we can we can calculate uh, the total number of samples, right? So we indicating uh, D as the joint data set, and is the total number of uh, sample. Okay. So now we want to solve the problem uh, in the for, uh, in the following uh, formulation. Okay. So first, let's look at uh, the right side. Okay. So F K is the the loss for the uh, one party, right? The case party. Okay. And F is the uh, F indicating the uh, the model, right? So this is the uh, maybe this is a deep neural network, or maybe it's just some uh, stand, uh, you know, classic uh, logistic regression or conventional machine learning approach, right? And theta is the uh, the parameter of the machine learning model. Okay, so basically we can uh, based on the data points, right, reside on the local uh, client. We can compute the loss function, right? So this is the standard, right? We can compute the loss function for each of the client. So we indicate as FK. And if we look at the left side, right? So this F is the, uh, this is can be uh, computed on the server side, right? So we basically aggregate the, the loss from uh, individual clients, right? So we consider uh, K parties or K clients. So we aggregate the loss from these K parties, right? And here uh, we have some weighting strategy, right? A N K over N, N is the total number of data um, data points. So uh, here we are just doing some weighting, uh, taking considerations the uh, the the sample size of different clients, right? Because if the the client has a small amount of uh, data, right, then maybe we don't consider or we don't weigh. Uh, the loss too much uh, based on this uh, client because it has limited uh, data. But if a data, if a local party right has a large uh, training uh, sample size, then we want to weigh more uh, based on their uh, loss has been computed. Okay. So these are some of the uh, basic notations. And now let's look at uh, the the algorithm uh, for Fed average, right? So now we have two parts, right? One is conducted on the local client, right? How the client is going to optimize or update the model, right? And the other is the, that is on the server side, right? How the server uh, is to aggregate or optimize the model to generate a global copy, okay? Uh, let's first look at the client uh, update. So this is uh, nothing but uh, standard uh, supervised training, right? Just in the centralized way, right? So we, for the parameters, right? We have to specify the batch size, right? If we doing the deep learning and the number of local training uh, steps, right? The how many epochs you're gonna train for your network and the specify the, the learning rate, okay? And so to do the training, right? We, for, for the specified L steps, right? We we basically, uh, you know, uh, process the data samples right from this mini batch with a batch size of B, right? And we just doing the uh, the usual stat stochastic gradient descent, right? So we have this kind of SGD update to update the parameter. Okay, after you do this for the L step, which we, we can specify, and this is the, uh, the local model or we achieved in this federate learning round, okay? And then we send this uh, model update, right? Basically the model parameter theta uh, to the server, okay? And this is just for one particular client, right? And uh, this 
process was done on every client, right? Assuming we have a capital K of parties or clients. So everyone uh, do this local training and sending this uh, theta K uh, to the server, okay? Now the job for the server is do the uh, aggregation, right? So let's see how Federate average doing the aggregation. So here they have, a, for the parameters, uh, it has a sampling rate uh, row. Okay, so the reason I have the client sampling rate is that we want to mimic this uh, cross device setting, right? Remember in, we previously discussed, right? For the cross device uh, federal learning setting, not every client will uh, will be available um, during the federated learning, right? So in this case, in order to mimic that or to simulate that, we can do some client sampling, right? So maybe we specify the sampling rate as 80%. That means every time we select 80% of the total clients uh, to do the aggregation, okay? And for each of the round, right? So we will, you know, select uh, you know, M clients, right? So the clients is based on the sampling rate, right? Sampling ratio, 80% of the total K clients. So we get the set of uh, M clients for to participate in the uh, model aggregation, okay? Uh, once we select these uh, clients uh, to participate in the model aggregation, and the, the actual aggregation is very simple, right? So basically, if you look at this, this is just a, a weighted average, right? So you have a theta K, that's the local model from the case client or party. Right here, you have a weight, weighting term, right? Again, this is based on the, the, the number of samples um, that's for the local data, right? So NK is the NK data points for the client K, right? N is the total number of uh, samples for all the K, capital K uh, clients, okay? So we are doing this kind of weighted uh, uh, model updates. Okay, so that's the uh, Fed, Fed average uh, algorithm, very simple. Basically, you're just doing the weighted average of the model updates. And if we specify L equals to one and rho equals to one, this is equivalent to the classic parallel SGD, right? So it's like in the distributed um, you know, machine learning, we distribute the data on the uniformly of the data and doing this kind of synchronized SGD. Right, so L equals to one. L equals to one means we only do one local update uh, to get the local model. Right, instead of training like L epochs, we only train one. And row equals to one means all the clients will be, uh, you know, possibility will be possible in the um, model aggregation. And if we specify L greater than one, right? So each client will perform multiple local SCD step before communication, right? So we, instead of just doing one time, uh, one uh, local update when sending the model to the server, we can do this multiple times, right? We can specify maybe five or 10 training epochs before we sending the, up, uh, the model to the server, okay? And this paper doing the comparison, right? If we're doing this kind of uh, fat average, which has L greater than one, uh, here uh, in their setting, they using five uh, local training epochs. And this fat SGD is basically uh, L equals to one. You know, every training epoch, you communicate that model uh, to the server, do the aggregation. So if you look at this curve here, right? So this blue one indicating the that SGD L equals to one and this uh, oranges or reddish uh, curve indicating the Fed average, right? And L equals to one. So this is just uh, specified with different learning rate. One uh, big advantage you can see from these uh, plots is that Fed average is able to converge uh, much faster, right? So the, the horizontal is the communication round, right? So that's the, uh, federating uh, learning rounds, right? We have to send the model to the server and download the updated model to the clients, right? So that's considered the communication rounds. And so all these federal learning is able to converge much faster, right? So under, I think maybe 200 or 300 uh, communication rounds and the model uh, gradually converge, right? To like uh, around 80%, right? These uh, test accuracy, 
uh, starting to plateau, uh, plateaus, right? So it doesn't improve much if you keep doing this federal learning training. But if you're doing a small local training, right, L equals to one, then you need uh, a, a, a lot more communication rounds to reach uh, 80%, right? So that's the, the benefit of this uh, Fed average. If you have more local training rounds, you are able to converge uh, much faster. So this is beneficial in the uh, federal learning, right? Because as we mentioned, uh, there's gonna be limitation in terms of uh, internet connection or bandwidth. And also, you know, uh, for, for the consideration of the latency, right? We want the model to converge uh, faster and also with less communication, right? So in this case, we can commute less of the data. And this will uh, maybe satisfy some of the uh, you know, applications. But there are several challenges for uh, federal learning. Uh, one is the, uh, we have to deal with the non-ID data, right? So um, as we mentioned, right? So the data is generated locally. And uh, so it, this kind of the nature of this federal learning setting will have kind of this inherent uh, challenge of non-ID data distribution. And this will cause the client model uh, often drift away from the ideal global optimization. So basically uh, this means uh, the model will overfit its local objective, right? B because we are doing multiple rounds of the local training, right? And this, and this non-ID data distribution uh, will overfit the local model, right? because we are doing this local training and the model is trying to fit the data uh, better for their local data. But this is not the ideal case, right? Because we want to have a, a global optimization, right? So this global model should be uh, generalized well for different uh, data distribution, right? To reflect the true distribution of the real world application. So to avoid this kind of client drift, uh, some of the you know easy, easy solution could be, we can limit the uh, local update, right? Maybe we do not perform many local updates. We perform fewer local updates, right? To prevent the model gradually overfit the client data. Or we can using a smaller uh, learning rate for the local model, right? So these strategies are basically trying to prevent the overfitting for the, uh, to the local data. But, um, the downside of these kind of uh, solution is that they will hurt the convergence, right? You will make the convergence speed uh, longer. You have to take more federal training run in order to converge because every time you limit your, your model updates, right? You have a fewer local updates, you are using a small learning rate. So this will, occur, will hurt uh, the convergence speed. So to address this solution, uh, people have uh, think about other strategies uh, to prevent this kind of client drift, but also uh, do not suffer like a slow conversion speed. So one solution is uh, to add a proxima term on the local updates. So the idea is very simple, right? So we want to uh, prevent the local objective uh, to overfit prevent the overfitting of the local objective, right? So one way we can do this is we can add this proximal term, right? So this is the uh, FKW, right? W is the local uh, model weights. This is the loss. And in, in addition to the uh, usual, uh, usual uh, local training loss, we add this uh, proximal term. Here means uh, WT is the the global model from the previous uh, federal training round, and W is the current round uh, for the local training, right? So here we using this L2 term here to, to make sure this the current update W do not deviate from the previous global model too much, right? So this is the L2, right? If we want to minimize the overall, we also want to minimize this L2 distance, right? So we, we don't want this local update going too much away from the uh, global model, right? If you go too much, uh, do you go deviate from the global model too much, that means you are trying to trying too hard to overfit the local data, right? So we, we're using this term to prevent that. So that's the, the basic idea of the, uh, you know, adding the proxy term, uh, kind of to regularize the local training, okay? So that's the, the FedProx uh, approach. 
Another uh, direction uh, is we can develop uh, the so-called personalized federal learning models, right? And learning from the 90 data is difficult and slow because each party has to, you know, wants the model to go in a particular direction, right? They, they want the local model to fit their local data, right? So if data distribution are very different, uh, the learning a single model which performs well for all parties uh, require a lot of uh, a very large number of parameters. So another direction is, you know, instead of trying to develop a one model can fits all, right? So basically we're trying to develop a global model can fits well for all the local party. This may be very challenging or difficult to achieve, right? Because of the non-ID data distribution. So the other way around is maybe we don't enforce like a one size fits all, right? We try to personalize the model, right? We can learn some of the common knowledge um, by sharing the model and do the aggregation, but we also allow some of the personalization, right? To the local data, okay? So that's uh, why the name is called a personalized uh, federal learning model, okay? So the idea is that we allow each party K to learn a potentially simpler personalized model theta, um, but design the objective to enforce some kind of collaboration. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the uh, objective uh, for the personalized uh, FL model. So here are some of the reference I list here, and if you're interested, you can um, check out this uh, reference for personalized FL. Um, some of the personalized FL method. Um, but basically, I can give you a couple of uh, examples. Uh, one is, you know, this so-called full uh, personalized model is after we do the aggregation, right? And doing, during the local update, we can also consider some of the uh, distributions or the model characteristics of the, lo uh, of the local model and trying to do some weighting between the global model and the personalized uh, and the local model. So that's one way we can do. Another is we can do some um, partial update, okay? So example is that maybe if you are doing a, like a CNN architecture and you can specify maybe like a, a small portion of the neural networks um, that is customized for the local data, right? Instead of share the full network, um, to the server and do the aggregation, maybe you can share like 80% of your local model and to the server and do the aggregation, right? So in a way you enforce some of the collaboration, right? 80% of the network uh, for collaboration, but you allow the, the remaining 20% of network parameter that is specifically tailored for the local data, right? So you, you kind of provide some of the flexibility, right? How to cope with the, uh, the, the data, data distribution of the local data. So that's the um, two uh, 